Let us now turn to the subject of stoichiometry. This is the area of science that deals with the relative chemical quantities of different reactants and products. For example, if I have 128 grams of oxygen, how many grams of hydrogen do I need to react with that? There are two issues that I have to deal with to be able to solve that. The first is I have to be able to scale up from atomic quantities up to gram level quantities. The second is I have to be able to count by weighing. For you see, I can only weigh materials on my balance. But Mother Nature counts when she does chemical reactions. It is two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen gives me two molecules of water. Not two grams and one gram and two grams, but two counts of hydrogen and one count of oxygen gives me two counts of water. So let's take the first issue, that of scaling up from the atomic level to the gram level, from scaling up from the nano level up to the macro scale world where we can work with it. The way this is normally done is by scaling up by a factor known as Avogadro's number. And Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So let's hold that number and let's see why the, and I'm just going to abbreviate that as Avogadro's number for now. So let's see how that scale up will work in principle. Let's say I have one atom of carbon 12. I know from my background that it, that must weigh 12 AMU, atomic mass units. Remember, one AMU is the mass of one proton or neutron. And because carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons, it weighs 12 AMU. Now, if I scale one carbon atom up by Avogadro's number, in other words, instead of one carbon atom, I consider 6.02 and 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms, we give that a name, and that is just called one mole. Avogadro's number is no more complicated than the concept of a dozen. You take one of something, multiply up 12, you have one dozen of those items. If you take one of something and you multiply it by Avogadro's number, then you have one mole of those materials. But here's why Avogadro's number is so special and why it is chosen as a scale up. Because if you take one AMU and you scale it up by Avogadro's number, that becomes a gram. In other words, if I multiply 12 AMU by Avogadro's number, I get 12 grams. And so the scale up is very simple. I do not lose my proportions at all. All I have done is taken the information that is on a periodic chart, one carbon, 12 AMU, and I can now scale it up to, to moles and grams. So now I can relate the periodic chart I could scale that up to gram quantities, so I now feel pretty comfortable about being able to work with this level here. Well, what's the next thing I need to do? I need to now be able to count by weighing. And we're going to do that by using dimensional analysis. But first, let me show you the basic theory behind it. Let's say I have a bag of nails, and it's opaque, and I cannot see inside that bag but I can weigh it, and I know that the bag's contents weigh 984 grams. But I'm not allowed to take the tie off of the bag, so I need to be able to count the number of nails. But if I could just know the weight of one nail, I could calculate this. And indeed, I do see a nail laying over in the corner. I get the nail and I weigh it, and I see that that one nail it weighs 12 grams. So I'm just gonna write that as a conversion factor. Or there are 12 grams in one nail. Now it's just a very simple matter of dimensional analysis. I want to know how many nails do I get starting with 984 grams of nails. But I know 
there are 12 grams in one nail. And I can see from dimensional analysis, I have exactly what I want. I needed nails to show up, and I started with grams. Grams canceled out. My units now match. They're in the proper position in the numerator. And so all I need to do now is pick up my calculator, and I come up with 82 nails. Notice I have determined the number of nails. I have counted, but I never actually counted. All I did was weigh. I counted by weighing. With those two fundamental aspects now solved, how to do that, I would now like to return to this and let's solve this problem. And we can do this with dimensional analysis. Start with your answer, set it equal to your given data, and work from there. So here we go. How many grams of hydrogen am I going to need to react with? 128 grams of O2. So the first thing I need to do is I need to convert grams of this into moles. And it's just the way I tend to do things out of organization. But I'm going to put I'm going to choose to write grams above the chemical equation. And I'm going to write the number of moles below. Remember, grams is my weight and moles is a count. And remember, we need to count to get these proportions right. So I'm going to convert grams. So how many grams of O2 are there in one mole of O2? Well, let's figure that. In one mole of O2, let's take a periodic chart and let's look at oxygen. One oxygen atom weighs 16.00 grams. So one mole of oxygen molecule, so there's two atoms in a molecule, so it's going to be 2 times 16. So one mole of O2 is going to weigh 32 grams. So if you're mapping this out, you can now see we are essentially right here on our map. We now know moles of O2. But I'm actually interested in H2. So I want to know how many moles of H2 I have. Well, I can do that with one more simple conversion here. What is my relationship now between moles of O2 and moles of H2? See, I'm converting from moles to moles, so I'm writing the ratio that does that for me. And I get this information from the balanced chemical equation. This is from the balanced chemical equation. Oh, by the way, I got this from where? From the periodic chart. And where did I get this? This was given. And this is going to be your main formula that you're going to use. You're going to have some given values, and you're going to get conversion factors either from the periodic chart or from the balanced chemical equation or from possibly some other source and you will just multiply your initial given value by those conversion factors from different sources until the unit that you're looking for shows up in your answer. And in this case, we're looking for grams of H2. So let's return here. What is my relationship between moles of O2 and moles of H2? I get it right here. There's one mole of O2 for every two moles of H2. So now I've moved the dot, if you will, here. Well, I'm actually interested in moving the dot here because that's what the question asks. That's where my answer lay. So I know I need one more conversion factor. And you've probably figured out now each of these arrows represents each conversion factor. So now what do I need to do? I need to go from this point, from moles of H2, to what? Grams of H2. And what is the relationship? For every one mole of H2, how many grams does it weigh? Well, let's look again at our periodic chart. 
there's periodic chart. I can see one atom weighs 1.01 grams, but so one H2 must weigh what? Twice that. Two times 1.01 or 2.02. So let me go back and get that. 2.02. Are we, are we done with the mental analysis and ready to pick up our calculator? Well, let's see. I started out with grams of O2 and I crossed that off. Why did I need to? Because grams of O2 is not in my answer. And neither is moles of O2 in my answer. But I've arranged this so moles of O2 cross off. Moles of H2 is not in my answer either. Grams of H2 is. But notice that moles of H2 gets canceled out. And what's left over here? Grams of H2. And what am I looking for? Grams of H2. And so that's what tells me I have completed my dimensional analysis grid and I now just need to pick up my calculator. And when I multiply that, I wind up getting 16 grams of H2. And there you have your first stoichiometry problem.